Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Mayor de Blasio today continued to suggest that political motivations are behind the multiple investigations into his administration's fundraising and political activities. Joining me now to talk more about this are two veteran observers of City Hall, both of them now consultants. George Arts was a top aide to Mayor Koch. Sid Davidoff was a former aide to Mayor John Lindsay. Welcome to both of you. Good to see you. Good and, you, um, you know, I, I don't want to get ahead of where we are, but, you know, there's lots of stories and you lived through what was a what turned into a genuine scandal right i mean manis friedman manis friedman at what point did you realize hey this isn't going away this is something that's going to really take a lot of work and focus of the administration i i think when manis tried to commit suicide mm -hmm. the first time um they and found him on the parkway right and he had, uh, yes yeah. and there were all sorts of rumors about why he did it I, and then the following week, newspapers came out and just talked about a PVV scandal. Mm -hmm. And some people in the administration said, I think this is why Manis committed suicide, because of the linkage to PVB. And I said, what linkage did he have? Mm. And that's when we started realizing that, th that there was a serious problem. Wow. And, and um, the, there's, the, there's the actual problem, right? But when these things happen, there's also this question of the news where like day after day after day, uh, an administration that's trying to get the city to focus on one issue or another is having that focus basically taken away from them. Right? Yeah, exactly, I and mean, that is the problem. And I, you know, the mayor alluded to that today, and he has done it other times, that he intends to run the city. Uh, he can only answer so many, the same question so many times in only one way. Uh, but he, the, the real problem is, you know, this has been a, a week, for example, with the budget uh, and with uh, the announcement that homeless, homelessness is down 12 percent, and that's somewhere in the back pages. And we're talking about uh, some other uh, memo that came out from the uh, Board of Elections or uh, some other uh, uh, potential scandal. So it's, it's, you, you tend to, uh, uh, it's almost like a bunker mentality at times, and you've got to get past it. Um, we had it with the NAP Commission on um, Police Corruption in the Lindsay Administration. I was very, I was co-counsel, uh, counsel and then became co-counsel with Mike Armstrong uh, to Donnie Manis when uh, this whole thing broke out uh, during the Koch Administration. And literally every story, every piece, every hint, uh, every, you know, somebody would come forward with some wild idea and there'd be a follow-up. It's good, it's tough. Uh, uh, in, 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 in advising the mayor, I assume what, what uh, everybody's saying and, and what he has to do is uh, you've got to get out there every day and you just have to do your job. You, well, what, what you know, it's funny because, um, uh, as you know, my dad was a, was a cop. And I, I remember the NAP Commission as a big, I mean, this was deep, serious cops on the take, you know, lists of bribes that they would take day in and day out at the precinct. It was a huge, huge, big we thing. We called right? it the pad. <laughs> the pad, yeah, right, The pad, right. it was the pad because... Uh, each precinct that was involved had uh, literally a pad. There'd be collections uh, made from, uh, it was just called soft corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, collections would be made from store owners, restaurants, or whatever it may be, whether from a free cup of coffee to dollars. And then it would be split up uh, in a certain percentage as it went up into the, into the hierarchy of the precinct. Mm -hmm. Much different than the investigation today uh, uh, because of the chiefs involved uh, today. But this was systemic mm -hmm. uh, and came, you know, the police department is a quasi-military organization. Political side of City Hall may set policy, but what goes on in, in the station house every day in the precinct is a whole nother world. You as a cop's son knows that. So we lived with that for well over a year, and it was front page times every day. Wow. For us, it was three years for Manus Friedman, that, and every day there was something new. Um, and, you know, Mattis killed himself. Uh, they went after Stanley Friedman. Um, it, they went after people at the at PVB, uh, the, the top people. Uh, and what it does is uh, cripple the administration. It demoralizes the administration, and you can't get your agenda across. Mm -hmm. And so there are some things there. There are things in the last term where we were able to do, like. The housing program and and uh, uh, the uh, gay marriage bill, uh, uh, the gay rights bill, uh, 
but there are things that we were unable to do, such as unifying the three police forces, mm -hmm. which, which was done by Giuliani in his first term. But we couldn't. We did. We talked about it. We did not have the political clout to do it at that well, point. What, what, you say you didn't have the, the political clout. Is that because? City council members and other city officials and the civic groups didn't want to rally to your side while all of this was going on. What, what we was the were, it, it, it is hard to go to city councilmen to to get this when the various PBAs at that time uh, were lobbying against you, and 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 there was no one wanted uh, to help the administration. Mm. You know, if you remember in Koch's book, at one point he said he considered suicide. That's how serious we didn't it was. know that at the at at the time, but but certainly he was depressed because integrity was the core for him. Well, what, to, to what extent does the the mayor have to, when under pressure like this, sort of set a tone? I mean, I'm struck by the the, the current mayor by Bill De Blasio saying we've done nothing wrong, which to me is about the lowest bar that you can clear, right? I mean. There's, I remember at, at, at least at one point where Koch was like, anybody who did wrong, I want to find them. I want to chop their heads off. They don't belong in my administration. I mean, he was really quite vocal it. about it. Yeah, well, obviously. Well, yeah, yeah. You can, but that was on, that was a question of, of, of uh, corruption, um, and rightfully so. Remember, this is the mayor starting out saying, it's important to the, to the people of this city that we have a democratic legislature. And it's my job to try and, and help the city uh, and this has been a fight that every mayor has had. I mean, even John Lindsay, when he was a Republican, uh, to, to make the up, uh, legislature controlled in part by upstaters to what the city needs are. So no one's talking about whether there is somebody who was enriched here, whether the public was, something was taken from the public. They're talking about whether uh, some arcane law that's, uh, this, we've, every lawyer I've known has interpreted in a different way so far has been broken. But that's not not corruption in the same mm -hmm. sense as what we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's not until it is, right? I mean, it's not until... Until they say you broke a law that you didn't know you were well, breaking. I mean, in fact, you're right. As an attorney, in fact, you, could, you can help straighten this out. I mean, it seems to me you've got split opinions that what happened with the Putnam County Democrats is that, you know, there, there's a bunch of money that's given to the, the, uh, the, the committee, the, the committee, committee. Then, the county committee. They then turn it around and designate it for a particular campaign. Th that seems to be okay as far as they're concerned. Out in Suffolk County, the lawyer takes a look at it, the, sort of a, a parallel idea that the UFT, one of the nice, the teachers union wants to give them $100,000 and say, hey, designated for this campaign. Their lawyer says, you know what? You've crossed the line. We're sending your check back physically. So there's at least two different ways to look at it, right? Maybe they didn't need the 100000 but <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, obviously, there's two different ways. Um, uh, the the council to the, uh, the state board of elections interprets it one way. Um, and uh, Laufa, uh, who was in that position for many years, who's the mayor's attorney, interprets it with a seven-page letter. Uh, we sat amongst ourselves. People know the election law pretty well. And it's fact-driven. It's, it's, uh, it is an arcane, mm. difficult law. It is made with a loophole. And the question is, how big is the loophole here? Right. Uh, but again, no one's suggesting that anybody pocketed anything. This was an attempt. Well, the consultants get, did pretty well, right? I mean, so, yeah, somebody did. I'm not sure. Right. Uh, you know, with how, how, how much your money went, or mm -hmm. money went to consultants or advertising, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, not in the sense that uh, monies was taken to enrich somebody by coming up with a scheme. This was done in, in, for the mayor's belief um, that you have to fight of state to get legislators who will at least allow the city to do the things that he's been elected to do. Okay. I mean, okay, fine. We'll grant him the best of intentions. But I the mean, laws need the, serious reform. Oh, that's for sure. The, 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 the other part of this, of course, is this um, uh, campaign for One New York, which is parallel to some other kinds of committees that have popped yes. up. Uh, to, correct me if I'm wrong. My memory was that, say, in the Koch administration, the Lindsay administration, there was enough of a bully pulpit that you needed sort of minimal help from these outside pools of money, that well, you we would rally the civics to your side. And, yeah. it, we didn't have those committees. Uh, uh, Bloomberg did um, for various things, mm -hmm. culturals and others. Uh, but it, this is a very new thing. Mm -hmm. well, this is a different day, though, George. I mean, yeah. you've, got, um, you, you've got big money going on the outside trying to defeat uh, the charter school uh, issue, for example. Uh, how does the mayor get his message out? It's not, the bully puppet isn't enough in today's time of advertising, uh, in, in today's time of, 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 of buying media. Uh, and so the mayor, 
And we had it as far back as into the 60s, we had a thing called uh, We Care. Uh, where we had uh, private money helping us. It was a little bit different. Uh, it was helping us get jobs for kids, buying basketballs, uh, and doing things outside the government would have taken bidding contracts to do. Mm -hmm. uh, no one suggests it was corrupt. I think that most administrations have had that problem of getting the message out, and now with this mayor as a progressive mayor, he has to fight a very uphill hill battle on a $15 minimum wage, for example, where you have a lot of retail money and other money going against them. Mm -hmm. I, I would think, though, that with the, the campaign finance laws that we have for New York City, that one's, you know, sort of core campaign account might be sufficient if you wanted to carve out a few hundred thousand dollars to sort of w wage that kind of a fight. And, and in New York City. In New York but City, it, yeah. this is, it, in this case, he went upstate, Telster mm -hmm. and... Well, uh, well, why are you talking about yeah. the, the, the money that went into campaign for one New York? Yeah. 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 Um, again, the campaign finance law limits you to $4,950. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of money to get into the hundreds of thousands you need to, take, to, to fight a campaign that's putting millions against you. Mm -hmm. And uh, not too many people are maxing out. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and if you're doing business, it's only 400 Right. Like us. Right. 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 <laughs> you're right. You're, you guys, right. <laughs> Okay, very interesting. What would be your advice to the mayor in our last minute? What would you tell Mayor de Blasio to do? Right Just now? go about his, it, his daily things, get out his, his agenda, do what you can do, and, and not worry about the investigations. Mm. I agree. I think a second part of it is that I think reaching out to the, to the established media and discussing how they want to handle that, because wherever he goes now, whatever he does, that's the story, that's the, what they, the mic in his face, and they've got to let him tell the story about the city, and while he explains each day what the progression or lack of progression is with this investigation. Okay. Well, sound advice from uh, a couple of the wise men of New York government. Thank you so much for coming by tonight. We're going to take a short break now. Coming up, we'll continue our conversation with four top journalists who have been closely following events at City Hall. The Friday Reporters Roundtable is straight ahead. Stay with us.